so today first i'll walk you through the course content and explain few basics then uh, we'll start with our uh, some installations and all then uh, I'll, I'll walk you through how the process goes on exactly okay i hope yeah 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 yes yes yeah okay so what i do uh, like uh, I'll mute everyone. If you have any question, definitely please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, see, uh, the purpose of this course is to, uh, like, uh, you have to target this role as a full stack developer. But see, when you work in development, it it's not limited to one programming language, right? People use many, uh, many other stacks, like uh, it could be any programming language, it could be any framework library or anything. But uh, our intention here uh, with this particular course is we are targeting with JavaScript. OK, so firstly, whatever programming language you choose to become a developer, the basics of this HTML CSS still remain same, right? So uh, if you see the course content, I hope you got this PDF. This is what I was asking about initially. So we have divided the course in such a way that we'll start from the basics like uh, with HTML, CSS, Bootstrap. After completion of this, we will start with JavaScript. Then, uh, you know, uh, after completing all the required topics of JavaScript, then we will start with merge stack. OK, so our final target is Merge stack. OK, so what exactly this stands for and all I'll explain that. But before that, what you will be developing, your role will be full stack developer. So what will be the role of this full stack developer? Any idea, anyone? To design web applications. Mm hmm. OK, actually you will be developing uh, uh, like web applications, but full stack means see you have to take care of front end and back end database. Yes, front end and back end. Exactly right. So what exactly this front end is uh, like this is for? User interface. user interface, right? UI part and back end. This database, database, right? right? The database part. So, how does this front end and back end will communicate? Through services, yes, APIs. Through some APIs, right? Yeah. So, in between, there will be business layer. So, uh, I'm starting with some basic things today. If you have uh, understanding of it, it will be just like uh, uh, kind of revision for you. Some basics. If you don't have this idea, then you know you get some uh, background on how this exact thing works. OK, so first of all, uh, you know, anyone aware of this client server architecture? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, explain in your own words. So, uh, OK, fine. Client sends a request and server gives a response, right? So in this client server architecture, uh, as an example, you can take if you are trying to browse some uh, application, first thing what you do in the browser? We'll give a request. Yes, you input some uh, URL here, so a request will be sent. Where the request will be sent? To the server. Yes, to the server. As a response, you get this entire uh, you know content back, right? Uh, I'm relating it to web applications, right? So how does this client server architecture work for that communication will happen? Uh, that is where the APS will come into picture. So it's not like every time APS will be there. Uh, this architecture can be one tier architecture. Two tier architecture. Three tier architecture or I can say entire architecture. N means that could be any number, but 
uh, how these are different from each other and what exactly modern applications nowadays are uh, following is this three tier one if it is one tier uh, still you need client and server but maybe uh, you know they may not be located in a different uh, pcs or locations they might be in the same pc if it is two tier you will see front end and back end still some sort of communication will happen but here uh, there may in these two scenarios there may or may not be the business layer that is nothing but the api layer but all the modern applications nowadays they are having this three tier architecture so how does this three tier architecture work there will be three layers the front end which is the ui layer in between there will be something called business layer then there will be db database layer right so how does the communication happen between this front end and back end see this is nothing but your front end this database is your back end in between how the communication happen through some apis right so all the modern applications nowadays are having minimum this three tier architecture so when when you start with this apis you will be like taking care of entire back end part right so how does the communication should happen uh, to build that uh, you know only the static content is not enough now what i mean by static uh, to understand that one question what is the difference between website versus web application anyone how website and web application are different from each other Web any idea the application is a part of the web server particular module mm -hmm. and when it comes to website it's a whole thing okay in one else okay see uh, when you say when you see some websites like this uh, you know this is a static website why i am saying it is static is there any interaction between this application and the user this one you are saying it talent hub application website here is there any way you can communicate with uh, or like uh, you can log in or register or do some actions here in this particular site Yes, we are just getting on enroll now. Okay. After this, okay. what will happen? It will take you to some page, right? Yes. So, uh, apart from that, anything else you see communication happening between this application and uh, end user? No. actually here it is taking you to some document right that yes. inquiry form you have to fill the form the form will be submitted right yes some sort of happening but not on full length right so if you see some static websites where there will be just something uh, some data you will get okay you just get some data but you may not be able to interact with that application it could be example of uh some someone is having their business they want to list their business they want to reach more audience but it may not have the option to uh, communicate like maybe users cannot log in and users cannot register users cannot interact with that application maybe they cannot book appointment maybe they cannot uh, place some orders na right? so that is the static one so website is always static but if you take when any web application uh here some sort of interactiveness will be there between the application and the user for example uh, are you aware of any online shopping uh, like uh, apps amazon yeah amazon flight booking yes all the flight booking and all yeah that is travel domain but e-commerce these two uh, and the travel domain that one right so yeah. there 
if you compare it with the static website how it is different it's an entire application where you can book flights you can book hotels if it is the uh, related to travel domain if it is e-commerce you can buy products uh, maybe you can sell products maybe you can track order na? so that interactiveness uh, that type of website web application is what dynamic so web applications are always dynamic website is always static that is the difference between these two 